abortion stop. This is the OJ Today. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Alex Bastiavansky. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We've got tons to cover on this week's program, including some big NCAA commitments to tell you about, plus uh, a feature story on the Trenton Golden Hawks. But first, let's do some game highlights. And uh, those Golden Hawks are one half of what is most likely the most intense rivalry in the Ontario Junior Hockey League, Wellington. Sits just about uh, 30 minutes or so from Trenton, down Highway 33. And to say these two teams don't like each other much, let's just say they won't be going out for coffee together anytime soon. The two clubs got to lock horns again last weekend, and it was intense, to say the least. And highlights in this segment are brought to you by Instat. Instat is the official analytics supplier to the OJHL, and as mentioned off the top, this might be the most intense rivalry in the league. Trenton has been dynamite so far this year, and they strike first. Nathan Oikel with the seeing eye point shot. Power play goal, 1-0 Hawks. No love lost between these two clubs, ouch. Sammy Douglas Najem sends Barrett Joint into next week. The Dukes even it up. Uh, Brody McDougal plays the members bounce to perfection right there. And 1-1 after 20 minutes of play. Now with the game tied 2-2 in the second, it's the G-Hawks with the odd man rush. Jordan Fuller using Justin Morrow as a decoy. He goes top shelf. And that gave Trenton the 3-2 advantage. Then it was time for the OJ's top scorer to get in on the fun. Dalton Bancroft, hotter than a Georgia asphalt on the 4th of July at the moment. Gets another goal. That would prove to be the winner as Trenton takes down Wellington by a 5-3 final score at the Duke Dome. Okay, Stouffville at 16 Mile Arena to take on the Oakfield Blades. This one was all O-Town first period. Brendan Bowie, look at that release. Double B making it one zip for Oakville. Soon after, Evan Pringle allowed to just waltz in and he blows it past Cody Tyson with the sick wrister. They'd make it three nothing. Now, Zach Weigel has been one of the top rookies in the OJ this season. This guy looks like a three-year veteran. Give and go with Josh Kudo, Weigel finishing it off. Eight goals in 12 games for the Rooks so far this year. Unreal, the Blades tap dance all over the spirit in this one. They win it by an unconverted touchdown. 6 0. Collingwood leading the North Division when they uh, visited Georgetown on Saturday, but the Raiders draw first blood. Robert Strachan from the tough angle right there makes it 1 0 for the Red and Black attack. And five minutes later, watches Collingwood's David Burr. Uh, oops, blows a tire. Eric Bertelson unwraps the early Christmas gift. Yes, I know we just got past Halloween, but you got to think ahead. 3-0 Raiders after one. The Blues get one back. J.P. Marrera popping the bottle. Uh, beauty. 3-1 after 40 minutes. Georgetown closed it out in the third, though. Kyle Kussman crushing that offering. Yowza. That made it 4-1, and that is how it finishes. The Raiders are currently in the penthouse of the West Division. One more in this segment. The Junior Canadians visiting the Patriots. Uh, first period of play here, and... <coughs> Zev Podolski coughing it up for Justin Legault. He rips the twine. one nothing Pats. Second frame. You will see this again in the plays of the week. I guarantee it. Eric Vitale. Ridiculous moves. And that made it 2-1 for the Canadians. The Pats. Just too much on this day, though. Selby Warren makes the initial stop. Ryan Forberg right there on the doorstep to clean up the garbage. The Patriots would add one more and pick up their fourth win of the campaign so far. Okay, an OJ commitment to tell you about, and it's brought to you by Instat. Instat is, of course, the official analytics provider to the OJHL, and we've talked already about Dalton Bancroft. He's like Hansel from Zoolander. So hot right now. And he's been rewarded for his hard work on the ice as well as in the classroom as he signed to play with the Cornell Big Red come the fall of 2022. Clearly, this guy's been uh, hitting the books, and he's been a huge reason as to why the Golden Hawks have one of the best records in the league so far this season. 
Okay, 60 second spotlight. And this segment is brought to you by Warrior. Warrior is the official hard goods supplier to the OJHL. Zach Weigel, forward, Ophil Blades. Just Weigel, Weigel, SCORES! And mamma mia, it's Zach Weigel again! Uh, what I bring to the ice is I'm a two-way centerman. Uh, I play hard in the offensive zone and defensive zone, and I try to produce my best on offense. Mamma mia, Zach Weigel gets another! So the player I looked up to growing up was Patrice Bergeron. Uh, great two-way center, great at draws, which is something I aspire to be like. So when I think about this team, I think about we got a ton of jokes on this team. The dressing room atmosphere is great. Everybody pulls pranks on each other and we honestly just get along and bond really well. So this year, I think this team's going to have a deep, deep playoff run. I think we could honestly win it and I think we're just going to have a ton of fun while doing it. Tip down low, scores! And it's Zach Weigel who gets his first career Ontario Junior Hockey League act trick. Hey, welcome back. You know, the Trenton Golden Hawks, year in, year out, are one of the top organizations in the OGHL, powered by an intense fan base and management that knows a thing or two about winning. The Hawks have made two Centennial Cup appearances over the last few years, and surprise, surprise, they're once again looking like one of the OJ's top dogs this season. We take a closer look at Trenton now, and this week's Team Spotlight and this segment is brought to you by Clean Quip. Clean Quip is the official disinfectant supplier of the OJHL. When we last saw the Trenton Golden Hawks back in March of 2020, they were cruising. Ranked as one of the top teams in the CJHL, they just won their opening round playoff series and we're about to take on bitter rival Wellington in what was sure to be an epic second round encounter. You know the rest though, COVID-19 forced the league to shut down for the season, leaving the Hawks wondering what could have been. Wellington and us had just both won the first round and uh, we're one, two in the league and uh, you know what a series that would have been uh, for all the fans of hockey and for both teams to get robbed of that was just, uh, so unfair and uh, you know hopefully uh, we can meet, it, meet, meet up again at some point. So far this year it feels like the Golden Hawks haven't missed a beat. They've shot out to one of the best starts of any team in the OJHL, sit first in the East Division and were named as the fifth best team in the CGHL in the latest national rankings. Our team this year were big uh, you know, we're hard to play against. I, I keep telling the guys you gotta continue to be hard to play against, game in, game out. Uh, we have some great skill, we have good size. Uh, we have a really, really deep group. Uh, we have a lot of core guys returning and a lot of, a lot of really good rookies coming in. And it's a veteran, tight-knit group this year that's definitely not lacking in intensity. The Hawks have been led offensively by a player that, as they say, comes from good stock. Dalton Bancroft's father, Steve, was a former first round draft pick of the Toronto Maple Leafs. His son currently leads the OJHL in scoring and just committed to play at Cornell University starting next fall. You know, Dalton's just a great young man. Uh, his dad had a long pro career, you know, so he's got good pedigree inside of him and uh, he's good leadership. He's going into the fourth year with us. Uh, he's going to have a tremendous year. We're expecting big things from him. Bancroft is co-captain with Brandon Butler, who's been a rock on the blue line. A uh, big physical defenseman, plays hard, a great captain. Uh, you know, Bancroft keeps things a little bit loose and. Brandon's going to be the guy to straighten the guys up and keep them in line and make sure they're towing the line and playing hard. Players suiting up for the Golden Hawks have a lot to live up to. The club won the Buckland Cup in 2016, the Dudley Hewitt Cup in 16 and 17, and of course, they're backed by some of the most passionate fans in the league that pack Duncan Memorial Arena. There are high expectations 
but the team is confident they're on the right track this year. Yeah, it's, I, as a local kid, I remember watching them growing up and uh, going to all their playoff games when, when they were on their, on their stretch there. So um, to be in my fourth year with Trenton, it's, it's really special and really proud of the boys so far. And um, just, just keep her going, keep gelling through uh, some more practices and as the season goes on. And I think we have a really special group and, and can go a long way. Okay, some more highlights for you, brought to you by Warrior. Warrior is the official hard goods supplier to the OJHL. And the Junior Canadians travel to North York to take on the Red Hot Rangers, but the JRCs put out that fire. First period, gorgeous passing, tic-tac-toe, Carter Reel, the finish. And uh, it was one nothing after 20 minutes of play. Second period, more pretty passing by the Canadians here. Brad Detilio tapping it home. 2-0, Junior Canadians. Now the Rangers would cut the deficit in half. Jack Rimmer sticks with it on the doorstep, and he makes it a 2-1 game. That's as close as the Rangers would get, though, as the Canadians would add an empty netter in the third to make it a 3-1 final. Okay, two teams that have struggled for wins this season hooking up. Caledon visited Mississauga. The Chargers hit first 36 seconds in. Cole Lonsdale making it one nothing for Saga. Second stanza, Chargers on the power play. Uh, Lonsdale nabbing his second of the contest, and that makes it 2-0. And then uh, yet another tally with the man advantage, Daniel Baldassara, the future Long Island Shark, smashing it home. Fun on the power play, a theme in this period for Mississauga. Christopher Bertucci, the one-timer. 4-0 uh, Missy Caledon would add one in the final frame. Not nearly enough on this day, though, as the Chargers cruise to the 4-1 win. Okay, one more game in the segment. The Patriots at St. Mike's to take on the Buzzers. Uh, pick it up in the second. The score tied 1-1. Giacomo Martino stealing off to the races and making no mistake. 2-1 for the double bloop. The Pats hit back, though. Jack, the Tishak, batting it out of the air and then Nice goal. No scoring in the third, so this one went to overtime. And the buzzers come in, they fire and score. Boy, that didn't take long. Justin Brown with your game winner, 12 seconds into overtime. Yeah, Justin Brown with the Howitzer to hand St. Mike's the win. They currently sit third in the South Division. This segment of the OJ Today is brought to you by Justin's. Justin's is the official award and ring supplier to the OJHL. Hey, welcome back to the OJ Today. In this week's alumni interview segment, we're going to chat with a guy who had a dominant OJHL career, so much so that he snagged himself an NCAA Division I scholarship to UMass Lowell, Lucas Kandata was the Markham Royals team captain and in 2017-18 was named an OJHL first team all-star and he provided moments like this. Everything's bouncing right now. Here's Oderkirk the other way, drop pass, quick money for Kandata, he scores! Luki, Luki, Luki puts it in on the short side, oh my! And there's a look at his stats over five years in the OJHL. Impressive stuff and a career that saw him suit up with three different teams in the league. And he joins me now from Lowell, Massachusetts, Lucas Kandata. Lucas, thanks so much for taking the time today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Well, it's so great to have you on the show. And uh, let's start things off with a look back at your OJHL career. As mentioned off the top, it spanned five seasons. You played for three different teams, Pickering, uh, the Hamilton Red Wings and the Markham Royals. Uh, looking back at your time in the OJHL, how do you feel it helped you develop as a hockey player? Um, well, first coming to the OJHL, I kind of was undersized. And uh, the main thing was that I was able to play with my older brother for two seasons there in Pickering. And um, I had worked out with uh, Mike Galati there. You know, I was just kind of happy to be there. And then that the third year, we would move to Markham and everything kind of uh, went from there. I got named the assistant captain, um, played penalty kill, played power play. And by my third and fourth year, I was the captain, and it was kind of like my team. And 
it was me and Mike had been together for four or five years, so he knew what he was going to get out of me, and I knew what I was going to get out of him, and it was just uh, it was a really prosperous relationship. Lucas, I think it's fair to say that you were a bit of a late bloomer when it came to putting up points and also the growth spurt you went through over your years uh, in the league. Talk about how your game evolved from when you first came into the OGHL to when you left. I would say a lot was was me growing. I came into the league, I was probably about five times, and then I was able to grow to about six one by my last season or my last two seasons. So I guess the time and then the maturity in the league, being able to play with um, being able to play with more confidence and um, get more opportunity also helped. Well, of course, you earned that scholarship to UMass Lowell, and this season you were named team captain. Talk about your time down there in Massachusetts so far and how it feels to wear that C. Uh, well, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's you, you come in here, you don't really know what to expect. And um, I personally came to UMass Lowell. I was just happy to kind of be here, but. Um, just taking advantage of your opportunities and um, yeah, it's, it's an unbelievable place and has a lot, Lowell has a lot to offer. Just getting named captain, I mean there's been three great captains before me and uh, I'm just happy to follow in their footsteps and hopefully do as good of a job as they did. Quickly before we go, Lucas, uh, captaincy seems to run in the Kanata family. Your younger brother Jaden uh, was just named captain of the North York Rangers for this season. Have you been following his games down there? I mean, they know they're doing pretty well. Um, but yeah, I talk to Jaden probably every day and, you know, I'm just excited for him. And if he's happy, I'm usually happy. So, Unfortunately, we are all out of time for today. But uh, Lucas, congratulations on the captaincy. Keep up the great work down there and take care. We'll talk soon. Awesome. Thanks a lot, you too. Okay, let's take a look at the performers of the week. And this segment is brought to you by Warrior, the official hard goods supplier to the OJHL. And the goalie of the week nod goes to James Gray of North York. Now, the Rangers, of course, have shot out to first place in the South Division. And Gray is a huge reason why. Stellar stats over his last three games. And he provided us some pretty sweet highlights to boot. Now, the skater of the week, how could it not be Dalton Bancroft? He signs on to play for the University of Cornell next season and puts up stats like that. Three goals, six assists, nine points over his last uh, five games. Okay, OJ News and Notes brought to you by Troy Hockey. Troy is the official apparel provider to the Ontario Junior Hockey League. And the CHCH Game of the Week returns this season. The dates are yet to be announced, but it's a go. And as Commissioner Marty Savoy says, it's all about giving OJ players national exposure. Uh, it's something that our governors are, are really behind. Um, we want to make the games bigger and better, get the viewership up as much as we can as well. But it's just an exciting thing for the kids to be able to say, hey, you know, I played a nationally televised game and um, we're looking to get all those games launched again. Now, sadly, the Buffalo Junior Sabres have taken a one-year hiatus from the league due to uncertainty over COVID-19 border restrictions. It was a difficult decision, but one done in the best interest of the players. Yeah, so one of the tough things we had to do is, is we were, there's so uncertainty at the border, um, is could we get over and could we get back and could Buffalo get over and get back? Um, and, and Larry Playfair, who runs the Buffalo Junior Sabres down there, he's an unbelievable person, first and foremost. Um, and his biggest concern in the Junior Sabres organization is if we commit to players in June and then come September, we can't get across the border. There's players that can't get an opportunity to play in other teams that are already filled. They will be back next year. They are a massive part of this organization that we have. We we can't move our governor showcase. We had to move our governor showcase because uh, we can't get across the border, uh, but they will be back. Okay, the NHL came out with their watch list and four OJ players made it. George Figueres, Adrian Rabello, Jack Sparks, and Harrison Ballard all on the radar for the 2022 draft. Hey, welcome back everyone. You know, it's fair to say that the biggest surprise in the OJHL so far this season has been the Lindsay Muskies for the last decade or so. It's been a struggle, to put it kindly, for the fish. The last winning season the club had was all the way back in 2012 and its last playoff appearance was in 2013. However, it doesn't exactly help that the Muskies happen to reside in the cutthroat East Division. 
This season though, the fish have been turning heads. They sit second in the East and we're looking to keep the hot play going against Coburg on Monday. And highlights in this segment are brought to you by Warrior, the official hard goods supplier to the Ontario Junior Hockey League. And it's exciting stuff to see the Muskies doing as well as they are, but they dug themselves a hole in this game. Trevor Hoskin making it a one nothing for Coburg right there. Now, Lindsay was down 2 nothing in the third when Killian Rowley gets sprung on the break. He makes it a 2-1 game. The Cougars would make it 3-1, but the Muskies refuse to die. They'd get it to 3-2. And then Gunnar Van Dam, maybe the best name in the league, ties it up at 3-3, sending this one to OT. Stall bomb now. He's deadly with a puck. Puts the brakes on. Looks for the trailer. Here's a chance to win. In shot. Backdoor score. Fish win this one. Well, Fish win this one. Lindsay in double overtime. Yeah, Kevin Dean with the call. Lindsay is for real. Nine and four right now on the season in the brutal East Division. K. Aurora was in Markham to take on the struggling Royals. We pick it up in the second. Markham leading one zip, two on one. Brad Barker banks on the rebound to make it a two nothing Royals advantage. Now this is not an instant replay. Same play, same end result. This time it's Colton Krasimski knocking home the fat rebound. Royals leading three zip. Third period, Tigers would snap the shutout. Lee Chang, the backhander, that beats Nicholas von Coffin. But then. Minichello. Right in front, shot scores! Minichello! So great to hear Joe Montezano calling games again. The Royals hold on for the 4 2 win. Okay, one more game Burlington and Milton to take on the Menace. Uh, the West is just ridiculous this year. No easy games. Lucas Buzziel gives Milton the uh, lead after a scoreless first period. The big man replies for Burlington, though. Jack Richard, the one-timer, past the keeper to knock it up 1-1. Third period, all menace, though. Holden Rogers poking it home out front. And Milton leads 2-1. And then just 46 seconds later, Justin Randawa netting what proves to be the game winner. The Menace double up the Cougars by a 4-2 count. Like I said, there are no walkovers in the West this year as uh, you're about to see when we show the standings. OG leaders now, and this is brought to you by Instat. Instat is the official analytics provider to the OJHL. As we look at the league's top scorers, Dalton Bancroft leading the way, followed by Brad Somers, Josh Belgrave, Bryce Sutherland, and Oliver Tarr of Halliburton County. To the standings we go now in the Southeast. North York looking good in the South and Trenton still red hot out East with a 10 and one record so far. As we move to the Northwest now, it is now Pickering leading the way in the North, the West though. As I mentioned, a dogfight. Uh, Georgetown, Burlington, Oakville, Milton, Brantford, not one team in that division right now has a sub 500 record. Plays of the week now, brought to you by Troy Hockey. Troy is the official apparel provider to the Ontario Junior Hockey League. Getting to it is the Rangers, the centering pass, look out here, they score. What a pretty three-way passing play. Pass hit escape, jammed up along the right boards, and then Douglas Najem buries joint. Right along the left wing boards, a massive hit. Control far corner. Again, look for that home run pass. Nice job there. There's a chance at a break. We're looking to get one shot. They score. Barber coming out with the puck from Wagner the other way for the blades. Barber's in, wheeling, feeling, score! Mamma mia, what a shot! Zemini, for the hand, Falcio in front of Richard! A beautiful one-timer by Richard! So, been a good little stretch for Bagaris. Loose puck in front of the goal! Oh, and Gray got a piece of that! As getting a great chance there was Carter Real, but he couldn't put it home. He did. Still has the puck. Kuzman now, Weisberg scores! 
A rocket by Kyle Kuzmin! Now the Blades are off on a two-on-one developing. Weigel, across, Kudo, scores! Zach Weigel will get credit and whip it. And what a hard-working shift right out of the player bench. Down the right wing with it now. Stahlbaum. Stahlbaum now. He's deadly with the puck. Puts the brakes on. Looks for the trailer. Here's a chance to win. In shot. Backdoor score. Fish win this one. Well, Fish win this one. Wins again. Double overtime. And that is going to wrap things up for this week. But uh, just a reminder, you can always stay up to date with what's happening uh, in the league by checking out the OJHL's different social media outlets. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.